Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna introduce ourselves to the concept of a vector. Vectors are super important in the math and sciences, especially in uh, topics like physics. So let's go ahead and start with the definition of what a vector is. A vector is just a quantity that involves both a magnitude and a direction. So some examples of some quantities from physics that we may be familiar with that are vectors are displacement, velocity, acceleration, and force. So basically, a vector can be used to describe anything that has a magnitude or size as well as a direction. So if we think about a displacement vector, displacement vectors in physics are used to describe uh, how an object has moved. So the two things there are how far the object has moved, that would be the magnitude, and the direction in which the object has moved to, well, that would be the direction of that vector. So another example of a vector from physics is velocity. So velocity is a vector, it has both a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude of our velocity vector is how fast that object is traveling, and the direction is, well, the direction in which that object is traveling. Acceleration is also an example of a vector. Acceleration is describing kind of your rate of change of velocity or how your velocity is changing. So the magnitude of an acceleration vector is, well, how much faster or slower is your object traveling at, and the other component or part of our vector is the direction, and that's kind of what direction is your velocity uh, changing, if at all. And yet another example from physics of a vector that is closely tied to acceleration is force. So force is a vector, it has both a magnitude and a direction. We can think of a force as like the, uh, the push an object is experiencing or the pull, just depending on your reference frame. So the amount of push caused by a force would be the, the magnitude of that force vector, and then the direction of the push would be just the direction of that force vector. So there are plenty of quantities out there that can be described using vectors, but there's also plenty that we run into that are not vectors and can, a vector cannot be used to describe them. Just a couple quick examples are speed, height, and temperature. So speed is definitely related to vectors, right? When we talked about velocity, speed is like the magnitude of our velocity vector, but speed itself doesn't really uh, have a direction attached to it, it's just how fast you are traveling, and that lack of direction means it cannot be described using a vector. So these other quantities, height and temperature, cannot be described using vectors for basically the same reason. They don't have any kind of direction attached to them. They're really just describing the magnitude of something. So the height is describing how tall something is, and the temperature is, well, how hot or cold something is. Now, if we had like a change in height or a change in temperature, then we might be able to start getting vectors involved to describe those quantities. But the quantities of height and temperature themselves are really just magnitudes lacking a direction, so they can't be described with vectors. All right, so there's gonna be a couple ways in which we work with our vectors. One of them is gonna be a geometric way, and the other is gonna be an algebraic way. And we're gonna start with kind of the geometric interpretation of a vector. And so we can initially think of vectors geometrically as directed line segments. So we'll have a starting point as well as an ending point. So let's go ahead and call that starting point P. The starting point of our vector is also referred to as the initial point. And the ending point of our vector, let's go ahead and call that Q up here. The ending point is usually referred to as the terminal point of our vector. So this vector here is not just the line segment connecting P and Q together, it's the directed line segment that starts at P and ends at Q, and that little uh, arrow at the tip of our vector kind of helps us indicate the direction of our vector. And so we'll talk a bit more about vector notation, but one way we can denote a vector when it's in a geometric picture like this is using the initial point and the terminal point, putting them together with a little uh, arrow above them. So this is the vector going from P to Q. And so if we wanted to note the magnitude of a vector, we pretty much just put that vector in double absolute value signs, although some textbooks might just use single absolute value signs. I prefer to use those kind of double absolute value signs, although technically I think it's called the modulus or something like that. But the, the double absolute value signs kind of help us recognize we're looking for the magnitude or size of a vector and not just the absolute value of some quantity. So we use the notation of denoting the magnitude of a vector by putting our vector inside of these little double vertical bars or these double absolute values. And geometrically, the magnitude of a vector can be found just by finding the length of our vector or the length of that directed line segment. 
And well, if we had some like X and Y coordinates attached to those points, P and Q, then we could find the length of the line segment connecting those two points or the length of our vector just using something like the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem. The direction of our vector is just the direction of that directed line segment, which way is that arrow pointing. And then in some situations, we might be able to find an angle theta to help us describe that direction. Hey everyone, up next we want to talk about some operations involving our vectors, right? We're going to need to know how to manipulate and work with our vectors, especially once we start getting into applications like if we have multiple forces acting on an object, how can we combine those multiple force vectors into a single force vector and things along that line. And so the first two operations we are going to look at and consider are what we call scalar multiplication and vector addition. All right, so first up, we're going to talk about scalar multiplication. There are some other types of multiplication that can happen between vectors. We're going to look at one of those later in this class called the dot product. All right, so how does scalar multiplication of a vector work? Well, let's go ahead and look at our definition that we have here. So if k is a real number, that's our real number that we call our scalar, and v is our vector, then k times v is how we denote the scalar multiple of our vector v. All right, so what does this type of scalar multiplication actually do to our vector? Well, the new vector k times v, our scalar multiple of v, is going to have a magnitude that we can find using the magnitude of our vector v multiplied by the absolute value or the magnitude of our scalar k. So what kind of effect does scalar multiplication actually have on our vector? Well, the name kind of gives part of it away. It's going to scale our vector, change basically its size or length, and maybe its direction if k is negative, and that's our last note here. So our scalar multiple k times v is going to have the same direction as our original vector v, um, but if that scalar k is negative or less than zero, then it's going to have a direction that is reversed. It's going to flip around. So here we have an example of just a random vector v. We don't really care or know about its uh, initial or terminal point, so we're just using a single letter to denote our vector v here. And I just want to take a look at a couple examples of scalar multiplication. So first off, what would 2 times our vector v look like? Well, here our vector v is obviously our vector, and 2 is our scalar. So our vector 2v is going to be the same uh, direction as our vector v, but just twice as long. And then maybe we also want to take a look at, well, what would something like negative one half of our vector v look like? This is also a scalar multiple of our vector v. The scalar is going to cause our vector v to shrink to half of its original length or size or magnitude. And then the negative is just going to cause it to flip around and point in the opposite direction. All right, so the next operation we want to discuss is vector addition. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And so if we add two vectors, say our two vectors are called u and v, then the resulting vector that we get by adding them together is just denoted as the vector u plus the vector v. Nothing surprising there. And so the way we actually find this new vector u plus v is by placing the initial point of our vector v at the terminal point of our vector u and looking at that result. So the, uh, the vector u plus v will have the same initial point of our vector u and we'll have the terminal point of our vector v. So maybe our vector u looks something like this, and our vector v is some other vector pointing in a different direction. Maybe it points up and to the right. And so then if we want to add the vector u and the vector v together, what we do is we align our vectors. Remember, we're allowed to move our vectors around freely in space to do this. So we'll take our second vector v and align its starting or initial point at the terminal point of our vector u. And so what we essentially do after this step is finish creating a triangle just by connecting the initial point of u to the terminal point of v. And so in blue is our resultant vector, the vector we get when we add u and v together. So this geometric definition of vector addition makes a lot of intuitive sense, especially when we think about some of those physical examples of vectors. In particular, if we think of u and v as displacement vectors, which would describe just how uh, an object is being moved, well then, if this is the starting point of our object and the vector u is applied to displace it, then it's going to move the object to this position. Well, if we then apply another displacement vector v, after applying the displacement vector u, our object will get moved from this position, the ending point of our vector u, up to this position, 
the ending point of our vector v. Well, instead of kind of doing these two displacements one at a time, our resultant vector u plus v kind of says, well, what if we just did that all at once, just went straight from our starting point to our ending point? That's one way to interpret this vector addition, what u plus v will do. And so our rules up here are written for vector addition, but we can also make sense of vector subtraction if we take our rules for vector addition and combine it with our previously discussed rules for scalar multiplication. Right, so in this first little example, we looked at what does the vector u plus v look like? We could also now look at what does the vector u minus v look like? And so if we want to use what we know to look at the, uh, the vector difference or the vector subtraction u minus v, we just have to think of this as the vector u plus the vector negative v, or we're adding to that the negative scalar multiple of our vector v. Well, we can approach this problem now using the same uh, method that we did for finding u plus v. So we have to visualize the two vectors we're adding together, u and not v, but u and negative v. But we talked about how to find the scalar multiple of a vector. You just change its length by the magnitude of that scalar. So negative one has a magnitude of positive one. That's not changing the length at all. And so the, the fact that it's negative is going to change the direction of our vector. So negative v is going to have the same length as v, but just point in the opposite or reverse direction. So now we have visualized what our vector negative v is going to look like, and now we can perform our vector subtraction by really just kind of relabeling it as vector addition mixed with scalar multiplication. So what is our resultant vector u plus negative v or u minus v going to look like? Well, the initial point of u minus v is going to have the same initial point as our starting vector u, and it'll have the same terminal point as the second vector in our sum, but that vector's terminal point is the terminal point of negative v. So it'll look something like this. Now this is our vector u minus v. Another fact that's worth pointing out is that Vector addition, like scalar addition, is commutative in the sense that the order doesn't matter. If we do u plus v, that's exactly the same as v plus u. I have a quick example I want us to do together to make sure we understand uh, these geometric ideas behind vector addition. And so in this example, we want to use the diagram below to write the sum and difference of these three vectors as a single vector. So we're going to take the vector from d to a, add to that the vector from c to b, and subtract away from that the vector from d to b. So in order to uh, tackle a geometric problem like this, the first thing we should do is try to visualize all three of our vectors within the provided diagram. So let's just go ahead and label them in order. So we have our vector dA that starts at the point d and ends at the point a. So our starting point is at d, and our terminal point is at a, this is our vector from d to a. All right, up next is the vector cb, that's the vector that has an initial point at c, and a terminal or ending point over here at our vector b. All right, and so our third vector in our computation here is the vector negative db. So the vector db is gonna go from d to b, but here we have a scalar multiple of db, the negative scalar multiple, and that's going to change its directions. So negative db is actually the same as positive bd. So again, db would start at d and end at b, but the fact that it is negative flips this vector around, reverses its direction, so it actually starts at b, and ends at d. And so our goal here was to write the sum and difference of these three vectors as a single vector. And so how does this vector addition and subtraction work? Well, once we set our diagram and place our vectors tail to tip together, we just look at the overall initial point of the sum and difference of our vectors and the overall final or terminal point from the sum and difference of our vectors. And so if we look at how our vectors are all connected in a line, we can see our initial point is up here at C. When we go from C to B, and then from B down to D, and then from D to A. So our initial point is at C, and our terminal point 
is at A. So our vector here, the answer of what is DA plus CB minus DB equal to, in this diagram, it's equivalent to the vector CA, the vector that starts at C, and ends at our point A. So combining vectors can be very useful, especially in physics problems. Maybe you have three different forces acting on a single object. If you can combine those three forces into a single vector, it'll simplify your problem greatly.